South Florida's premier gyms going at it. Coming up this weekend to the co-main event, it is Killcliffe FC versus American Top Team. Two former welterweight title challengers going at it for a scrap. It is Gilbert Dorino Burns taking on Gamebred Jorge Masvidal Matt. People might know Gamebred from Icon FC. They might know him from Gamebred Boxing. I mean, Jorge Masvidal. Getting it done outside. They probably of the know room. him for knocking out Ben Askren, to be fair. They probably know him for knocking out Ben Askren. Even in his promo for Game Bread Boxing, he jumped in off camera with a knee and then promoted the boxing. But for Maz Vidal, looking for his first win in a meaningful amount of time. He lost both times against Kamara Usman. Fair. He ended up his last time out against Colby Covington. Getting a fight of the night. One judge scored a round for him. The other two scored at 50-45 and 50-44. So it wasn't necessarily all that competitive. But it's not necessarily just about that fight. Because a few weeks later, the Steakhouse incident, and we haven't seen Jorge Masvidal or Colby Covington compete in the octagon. Now, Masvidal went on the JRE MMA show, and he said, and I quote, Joe Rogan says, what happened illegally? And Jorge says, allegedly a lot of things happened, bro. I don't know. So Jorge Masvidal, Masvidal playing it cool as ice. But for Masvidal, again, the last win that he has was against Nate Diaz. This is how I look at this fight. And again, I've been one-sided on a couple of these, but I'm just going to say what I feel. If I didn't see Gilbert Burns get knocked out by Dan Hooker at 155 pounds, there would be no question in my mind he wins this fight. I I'm just being honest. Is he a better pure wrestler than Jorge Masvidal? Without a doubt. Gilbert Burns not only has great one-touch, one-kill jiu-jitsu, he is a very physically dominant wrestler with that. I talked about the Tyron Woodley fight before we even started filming, but that fight really cemented in my mind, okay, this guy can wrestle at 170 pounds, because I know you might laugh at Tyron Woodley at this stage of his career, but for the longest time, not only was he known as the welterweight champion, he had second to none takedown defense. Was impossible to take down. And I know Usman was able to get him down a couple of times in their matchup, but the fact that Burns was not only able to get him down, but control him was really telling in that matchup because I do think it speaks to how talented of a grappler a guy like Gilbert Burns is. And in a matchup like this, I know people are going to want to say, oh, with the flying knee. And hey, I know you bring up the scorecards against Covington, but Masvidal did land the most damaging shot of that fight, to be fair. He landed yeah. a check right hook to drop Colby Covington. I know Covington had a pretty funny quote after the fight about it, but still, Masvidal is very dangerous from any moment in the fight because he has great cardio, great punching power, and great hand speed. The problem is, and this is why, like, Joe Rogan came out and said, oh, Jorge Masvidal's like better than GSP because if G he fought GSP's time period, he's so much better. That's insane. Jorge Masvidal and George St. Pierre are like the same age right now. The difference is, George St. Pierre's... I'm just going to say the greatest fighter of all time. And Jorge Masvidal's had like a 500 record in the UFC for a minute now. So this isn't me diminishing Jorge Masvidal. I just think some of those quotes have been a little insane as of late. I think it's a great chance to win this fight because, again, Burns is a guy who has good striking. And that's been the part of his game he's continued to improve upon. But he leaves big openings when he does throw some of those strikes. He has a big looping left hook. Same thing with the right hook. And I could see a world where Masvidal's able to counter off of those. But my concern is Masvidal's going to have to make a lot of quick decisions very fast. Because he's going to be pressured a lot quick by Burns. Decisions very fast. So you don't he's say. gonna make quick decisions on the back foot against a guy like Gilbert Burns. And for those reasons, I think it's been really interesting to see how Masvidal fights this fight because being on your back foot against Gilbert Burns is a difficult way to win a mixed martial arts and contest. We remember how Masvidal looked against Donald Cerrone in that fight that they had. Then he dropped a couple Seven in a row, Damon Maya and Stephen Winterboy Thompson. So what does he do? That's when he reinvents Number himself, three. brother. It is the Exaltalon Estados Unidos. He I'm ends like up like Dark Kermit. On that show, and Jorge Masvidal comes back, strings off three giant wins, and then we're off to the races to the title fights. And you can't minimize those fights. And the best part—it was for, such a fun run, exactly. The best part for Masvidal out of all of that, he, if he beats Gilbert Burns, you might not like it, but he and Leon He's Edwards shared some words. Now Leon shared words, and then with his hands down, Masvidal kind of went after it. But for Masvidal, threw the three piece in the soda as he described it with Brett Okamoto after that. And now we're into a situation where Masvidal definitely really needs a win after three losses. But as I mentioned earlier, he set himself up for retirement with Game Bread Boxing, with Icon FC. He has a lot of things oh, going yeah. on in the personal life. The the line of Mezcal. There, there's so many things going on in the life for him. Masvidal, a guy who headlined Bellator number one. John Anik used to be a Bellator commentator. Exactly. What was Jorge Masvidal's record at Bellator one? 16-3. That's Adrian Yanez's record right He's now. Been around, so guys. Masvidal's been around the block a time or two. For Gilbert Burns, the same thing can be said. And for both of these guys, 
lightweight experience before uh, until lightweight became a problem and then they moved up to exactly. welterweight burns debuted way 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 back when against andreas Stahl back in 2014 and then he was able to get it moving burns in the ufc a tidy tidy 14 and 5 record for masvidal 12 and 9 but overall you look at the matchup matt People might forget that Gilbert Burns had a 2021 fight of the year contender against, uh, you know, Hamzat Shemaev at the start of the year. He got dropped like six times in that fight, though. <laughs> no, this is my point. Do people remember Gilbert Burns' fight back in January? Like, he just fought. That's the craziest part about this. He fought against Neil Magny, main card of a pay-per-view, finished him in the first round, and then other than having a full head of bad. hair, there's not much to talk about. First two and a half minutes of that round nothing happens there's a body kick from gilbert burns both guys neil magny goes ha, ha, and throws some jabs guess, that hit if, the air and then burns takes the action to the mat controls from side control to guard to side control and then did exactly what rda did gets him in a head and arm triangle and that's the end of the matchup i think we're gonna see a very similar performance this is the thing masterville has a great chance to win this fight if it's on the feet again he has great power great hand speed and that's the thing that i do think gets lost his hand speed is the x factor it's and not the power he does have great power but the way that he can mix in his combinations well, what do and we, use his hand speed what do we really always talk about the jorge masvidal combination the switch with his kick well it's not even just like any combination he throws with his box i know that can accentuate it because of the darren till performance but you can't just let that knockout cloud it like he has great combinations on the outside on the inside he can get dirty with his box he can be kind of pretty on the outside and work his jab. That's what I like about Masvidal. But I do worry about what he's going to do if he is on the back or on his back against a guy like Burns. Because Burns offers a very unique threat compared to a guy like Usman or Covington. Covington and Usman are great wrestlers. But once they get you down, yes, they can get submissions. But a lot of those submissions are going to be opened up based on your own exhaustion. Gilbert Burns is going to find submissions, though, if you're on the mat and you make a mistake. And I think that's one area of Masvidal's game that he's really going to have to focus on in this matchup. And that's the one thing. Like, the odds are very one-sided so i'm a little surprised to see this matchup boo earns is the favorite in the matchup we have a look at the youtube community tab we threw it out there to you on the youtube channel if you're not subscribed and you're not checking this stuff you out doing? you should and matt i mean we're talking about the fact that there's about a thousand votes on this poll as i reload it 78 percent going with gilbert burns to get the win mark is saying i think jorge's takedown defense will make this closer than expected burns by split decision on account of bad judges. wow i like it mark gets it the judges are bad uh adam baron florida boy jorge by either southpaw jab lead uppercut right straight from orthodox or decision y'all must have like forgot it. performance one of the ogs of the sport 20 uh years in what if other you're finishes be that did you get? Direct though, I like it. Like one, t one, two, three, four, five different ways to win. Chandler Witt. I feel like Burns by murder is the expected result, but I have a bad feeling Masvidal sleeps him and rolls the hype straight to a title shot against Leon. And I'll go with, uh, I'll go with one more in Jacob Twizzy Rich saying Jorge KO. Y'all gonna see, uh, Matt? Will we go see? I don't think we will. Again, I bring up the Dan Hooker performance because that's one that does linger in the back of my mind as somebody who... Gilbert Burns is probably a little bit more skilled in if you just look at the over-encompassing amount of the mixed martial arts, but Dan Hooker was able to just be really accurate on the feet, and I don't think Burns isn't durable. I don't think that's the case. Like, he has crazy drive, he has wild heart, but we have seen him get hurt on the feet numerous occasions. So, again, I think that window is open for Masvidal, but due to the totality of Burns' skill set, I have Gilbert Burns. He's got good heart. He's got a lot of drive. But yes, like that's the thing about Burns. He gets dropped, but he never loses because it's like, oh, I can't win this fight. Like, Shamayev had him dead to rights on numerous times in that matchup. Burns dug so effing deep, it was ridiculous to make that fight to, competitive. To me, it's a grappling differential between the two guys. And I mean, for Jorge Masvidal, is he a good grappler? Sure he is. I mean, he hasn't gotten to this point by being a subpar grappler. and Didn't get finished by Usman in the first fight. Didn't get finished by Covington. Or Maya. Did get, didn't get finished by Damian Maia and was able to make it somewhat competitive. But, yeah, I mean, against the Covington fight, the lasting image is that straight shot, Masvidal going down. So, for me, I do like Gilbert Burns in the matchup. But this is the big thing for me, for Burns' last time out. Heavy feeling out process at distance against Neil Magny. If he does the same thing against Jorge Masvidal, the numbers could start to pour in for game bread if Burns does so desire to let it go that way until he shoots for a takedown. So really eager to see what we get out of these two guys at welterweight in the matchup. The main event, the fourth meeting, the second in a cage, the second for the title. Alex Pereira looking to make the first title defense. Six pay-per-views. He won that 
Big time shiny belt. He's taking on Israel Adesanya. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fighting Apex. We always say, let's, let's get, get into, into 